I do hope you voted in our landlord voting intentions poll. It's just a little bit of fun here on Property Tribes. But right now I'm joined by Kate Faulkner, industry commentator, to actually talk a little bit about the housing policies and counting down to the general election for landlords. And Kate, I think the first thing we should really say is not only have we got multiple housing policies with the different parties, um, but also we've got three different regions of the UK with their individual uh, housing markets, you know, England, Scotland and Wales. So it's actually quite, quite complex to see how the general election is going to affect all of this. Well, it is because in actual fact, that's going to go up to, you're right, there's three different policies at the moment. So at the moment, most housing policies are, you've got Scotland, which is different, um, and you've got um, uh, you've got Northern Ireland, which is different. England and Wales, certainly from a lettings perspective, have been pretty similar. But Wales is about to completely break free, if you like, from uh, English um, housing policy on letting side um, because they're introducing regulation that we've not seen the likes of anywhere in any of the other um, regions that we've got. So. Um, anybody thinking of investing in Wales, you've got to first find out what all the new rules are mm. that are coming from there. Uh, and you can't just buy a property, for example, and let a property out. You've got to go on a course or you've got to go through a RICS, ARLA or NALS agent um, mm. to be able to, uh, to to have your property managed by them. So completely different nightmare if you're writing about it. all the different decisions that they're making. Um, and then when you lay on top of that the general election, uh, it is quite complicated to get your head around. Well, that is a very significant change in Wales. You're absolutely right. And there are changes coming down the pipe in Scotland as well. But let's talk about the uh, the, house, the the main parties. The Conservatives are right out in front in the property tribes, um, the little fun poll we're having. Um, what are the top three sort of general election issues for landlords that you see? OK, so the first one, which I think a lot of people have missed, actually, is um, what's going to happen to capital gains tax. Um, you know, because we've chatted about it a lot, that there's quite a lot of anti-letting agent uh, rhetoric out there and even worse against buy-to-let landlords. And, you know, just take the opportunity to apologise for a lot of it because I think it's tremendously unfair. There's a mm. massive amount of good buy-to-let landlords out there. And in my view... They are being blamed for MPs and governments, successive governments, not building enough homes. So mm -hmm. the housing crisis is not the landlord's fault at the end of the day, yeah, yeah. but they're taking the brunt of the blame. Now, the big thing is, is that when you go to sell your properties, um, you will, as it's a second property or more, you will end up paying capital gains. Currently, if you're a lower rate taxpayer um, and the net get capital gain that you make out of your property is £10,000, you won't pay anything because you'll have a um, you have an allowance. Yep. But if you're into the 50, 60, 70,000 pounds, that allowance comes off. Any of your other costs that you can apply come off, but then you'll be charged at a 20% um, tax rate, so the lower income tax rate. Now, if you're at the 40 or 45% income tax rate, that or tax um, uh, method, then you'll pay 28% capital gains. Mm. Now, if you listen to what um, people like the Lib Dems are saying, for example, they're talking about aligning capital gains tax in general, but this will affect landlords who want to sell, with the income tax rates. Right. Which could mean if you're a higher rate taxpayer, you could end up paying 40 to 45%. Ouch. So it's a big, big difference. Mm. Uh, and you can mitigate capital gains tax. There's various different ways. Um, dying is one of them, but I don't recommend it. Um, and then all your kids have got to pay the inheritance anyway. So really, really never been a more important time to get out to a property tax expert to try and mitigate that capital gains as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really the biggest one. Second one is uh, getting a lot of noise is rent controls. Now, two ways rent controls happen. Firstly, you can cap rent controls. So if you think a little bit like what they've done to the local housing allowance, mm -hmm. they've said, right, we're going to cap this and you can't have any more. That's already resulted in quite a few landlords coming out um, of the market and moving their stock into the professional uh, market. Can't blame them for doing that. That's, that's their um, prerogative. Um, but there is actually a petition for, a, and it's signed by over nearly 70,000 people, to cap London rates at £800 a month. Mm. Lovely idea, but just wouldn't work 
any landlord would sell up because it's virtually impossible to make a, a living out of that um, as a landlord. So I don't think we'll see rent caps coming in, but what is quite possible is that they may limit the amount that rents can be increased year on year. Mm-hmm. Now, that was going to backfire badly on existing tenants. So if you're a tenant at the moment and your landlord's a bit of a rogue and they put through a 10% big increase year on year, you may benefit. But as you and I know, most landlords are good landlords. Mm -hmm. Most landlords definitely want to keep their existing tenant. And when you look at the rises that existing tenants get on their rent, it's hardly anything. Mm. We know that from the Countrywide Index. We know overall rents, according to the Office of National Statistics, so government statistics, that have been produced, the average rental rises are around 2%, which is less than inflation. So if they decide to put in the rent controls, the only other example we've got of the impact that would have is um, rent controls already exist in the social sector. So if you do shared ownership, you pay some rent on that, or if you're a social tenant, the comparison is since 2008, rents have gone up in the social sector by 21% compared to 7% in the private rental sector. Well, that says so, it all, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Rental controls, fantastic. I genuinely wouldn't, shouldn't think let, uh, either letting agents or landlords should worry about it. It is one of those unintended consequences, and I'm afraid the biggest losers will be existing tenants. And what's your third thing? So the third thing really is whether landlords have to be licensed or not. And yep. what on earth happens with all these accreditation screen, schemes selective licensing, additional licensing, all of these local rules and regulations that are coming in. I think the um, Greater London Authority have introduced the London Rental Standard, for example. Yep. And I think what would be wonderful is if that could be adapted as a standard um, accreditation scheme right across all of the other local authorities so that if you're somebody who's got a, a property in five different local authorities, you're not trying to work to their rules, each five different rules on top of the national rules, um, which apply to your particular country, if you're England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. Um, and I think that what we what we need is if we introduce landlord licensing, for example, which um, uh, some of the policies are looking at or some of the fiscal parties are looking at, then that could mean less need for local accreditation schemes, which would make life a little bit easier to some extent um, for landlords. Well, it would. And we've just intro- heard about the introduction of the Man- Manchester renting pledge uh, this week as well, which is good news. I think the main thing for me is in enforcement of existing legislation. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, do we feel that one party is, is more uh, amenable to that than, than, than another? Well, it's a tricky one because, of course, the enforcement is down to the local authorities. So all the local authorities will be run by lots of different parties. Um, And I think what we've got to do now is um, Newham has uh, been the uh, local authority that has um, really taken enforcement to um, the best level um, that we've seen to date. And what I'd love to do this year is um, uh, work with Newham to see the impact that it's had, um, to see the benefits for tenants and landlords. And then what we're going to need to do is take that as a sort of uh, sales pitch, if you like, out to all the local MPs. But... It almost doesn't affect the political parties because you'll have, for example, Greens run Brighton and Hope um, and they have a different attitude to a Labour council, which, uh, say, City of Nottingham. Next to that, you'll have Rushcliffe, which is the um, which is a Conservative council. So the local authorities have really got to um, step up and make sure that they can keep all their fines, as Newham have done, and put that back into enforcement um, because it's not fair to keep introducing rules and regulations and then not um, and then not hold anybody accountable. Absolutely. So I think from our little poll, we we find that the Conservatives and UKIP are the two most landlord friendly parties. And I know that the Housing Minister for UKIP is actually a, a very big landlord himself. So perhaps he is more more friendly to landlords and understands their needs. But very interesting uh, times ahead, Kate. And we We'll all be watching uh, on the 8th of May. and uh, well, we, see might, how... we might still be watching some months later to find out who's in charge as well. Quite. Well, lovely talking to you and thank you very much for your input into Property Tribes. As always, it's very much appreciated. Likewise. Thanks a lot. Thank you.